Hey everybody, I'm Peanut Butter Gamer, and I decided to branch out, so welcome to my new cooking show. Mmm, yummy. Now welcome to my new show where I take pictures of animals. I love animals. Now welcome to my new show about hunting. Now I'm doing a swimming show, except that I forgot that I don't know how to swim. Probably should have stuck to video games. Oh well. Bye bye. The top 10 weirdest spin off games. Alright. Mega Man Soccer. Dr. Wily and crew are up to their old evil tricks again, and Mega Man's gonna stop them with soccer. It's the perfect plan. I've always loved this game, even though it's not really very good. The coolest part of the game is that when you beat a team, one of their members joins your squad. They all have different strengths and weaknesses, so it changes up the somewhat dull gameplay a bit. Why there are eight Mega Mans and eight Fire Mans running around on the field? I have no idea. And no, it doesn't explain it, so don't bother asking. But who cares? I'm in the final match versus Dr. Wily. There's only a few seconds left, and he's up by one. How will I ever pull this out? Oh, Proto Man with the last second goal! What a brilliant finish. And then we beat him in the penalty kick shootout four to two. What an amazing come from behind victory! That's it? This is not good. He's been affected by the evil energy. He will die soon. <laughs> Far Cry 3, Blood Dragon. Far Cry 3 was actually one of my favorite games that released in 2012. I love the environments, I love the palm trees, the beaches, I love the sharks, the alligators, I pretty much love freaking everything about it. And you know my favorite part is that one part where you shoot guns? That was a pretty cool, that was a pretty good one. That was a good part of it. Far Cry 4, on the other hand, was pretty disappointing to me. It just felt kind of uninspired and rushed. Except for the helicopter thing. Whee! That part I liked. But you know what didn't suck? Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon. You know, the game I was talking about a minute ago, but then instantly stopped talking about in lieu of my sudden desire to complain about Far Cry 4. That game. Okay, I'm getting incredibly off track here. Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon. It's an 80s action movie inspired spin-off of Far Cry, and it's weird. And also awesome. Uncharted Fight for Fortune. Oh, right! An Uncharted game? I love Uncharted running around, shooting people, climbing on stuff, explosions! Yeah. Oh, it's a card game for the PS Vita. Okay. Pac-Man, one of the most successful arcade games ever made. So where do they go from there? Oh, I know. Let's make him walk around and do chores. That's fun, right? Well, it actually is kind of fun, assuming you have the patience for it. Pac-Man 2, the new adventure starring Pac-Man, the super cool hero of this game. And you know he must really be cool if they had to specify it via text. Pac-Man may have appeared to be pretty capable and on top of things in the arcade game, but in the new adventures, he's anything but those things. In fact, he's kind of dumb. If you want him to do something, you're gonna have to spell it out and sometimes even manipulate him into doing it. But honestly, it's hard to even want to help him at all because he's kind of a huge jerk. He steals things, damages property, and kills people, sometimes for no reason at all and without you telling him to do it. And he even verbally abuses his poor little dog. But uh-oh, Pac-Man. Karma. <laughs> Yoshi Safari for the Super Nintendo is a game that utilizes the Super NES Super Scope, the SNES's version of the Duck Hunt gun. The game consists of Mario grabbing a bazooka, hopping onto Yoshi, and shooting the crap out of people. That's literally all you do in the whole game. Next! Is playing video games just a little too hard? 
Then I have the perfect thing for you. Wow, Pokemon Channel? Thanks so much! Yes, Pokemon Channel. The game that really isn't a game at all. So Magnemite delivered me my very first Pokemon Channel TV and I just can't wait to play. And by play, I mean not play anything and instead sit here and watch the TV anime all the way through. Thanks, Professor Oak. After 10 minutes of some Pichu anime, Pikachu joins you for basically no reason at all as far as I can tell, and you continue to watch more TV. That is the whole game. There's a quiz channel that you can't even participate in, a news channel hosted by Psyduck and Meowth. I'm here on the scene. <coughs> Baby? I see. Mm-hmm. And there you have it. That ends my report from the scene. Wow, Meowth. That was a really good job. And a workout channel with Smoochum. And you can also buy stuff on the shopping network and collect cards. Nice cards are very nice. Um, yeah. Again, thank you, Professor Oak, for the help. And yes, what a nice card it is. I especially like how there's no background, he's not centered at all, and his face is being covered up by his name. And those completely unnecessary white lines that look terrible really add a lot to the niceness as well. Yes, very nice. Just kidding, it sucks. House of the Dead is a game where you shoot, well, dead people. I actually used to play it all the time in arcades and bowling alleys as a kid. But then they made a spin-off of the series for the Dreamcast called Typing of the Dead. Yes, typing. You kill zombies by typing at them. And they even walk around with keyboards and Dreamcasts strapped to their back. But as ridiculous and hilarious as all that is, the most entertaining part to me is the voice acting. The Typing of the Dead. Thank you for rescuing me. <laughs> People of the AMS, I am Goldman. I don't want to die. My God. Mario and Sonic. Bitter rivals since the early 90s, but they were destined to finally meet in the ultimate crossover game that everybody, I mean nobody, asked for. Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games. The best video game ever made. Let's go! You can do it, Ouija! You can beat Sonic at a run! All you have to do is believe in your heart and soul. You're supposed to play as characters from either the Mario or Sonic universe, but it looks like you can also play as a me. And I know which one I'm picking. Come on, bro, Jared! You can do it! Just try a little bit harder than that! All right, you've got it! Ah, so close! Better luck next time, man. I guess you're just not as good at video games as me. None of the mini games are fun at all, and that's not a good thing considering that's all there is to do. Do you like pressing buttons quickly? How about waggling motion controls? No? Well, that's too bad. Let's take a look at the ping pong mini game. Wii Sports Resort's ping pong game is somewhat intuitive. You can control where you want the ball to go, the speed of the shot, and you can even put a spin on it. In Mario and Sonic, you can do... None of that! It doesn't even matter which direction you swing. It's not very good. Probably the most fun game to me was Skeet, and it was also the only one that I had any difficulty with at all. Although I've gotta say, the image of Luigi angrily walking towards me with a gun is not really something I needed in my life. And oh yeah, the game also wouldn't let me name my save file Peebs because it had the word P in it. <laughs> I just thought that was worth mentioning. Dance Dance Revolution Mario Mix. Waluigi, I mean, 
I wonder who it could be. Stole some music keys or something stupid like that, and only Mauro, the dancing fiend, can save the day, probably. Or Luigi. Yeah, let's just go with him. Mario is busy doing something... I don't know, more important than dancing. We've gotta save the world, but oh no, the river's blocking the way. How inconvenient for us. But according to Toad, if we do a little dance, something might happen and we can cross the river. Or we could just get on a boat, which they literally end up doing anyway, so what was the point of the dancing? Everybody is watching you. Wait. Everyone's watching me. I gotta say, that's a pretty creepy thing to hear, especially when you're playing a dancing game by yourself in your underwear. You know, it's hard to look at the screen when you're actually playing and focusing on the arrows, but now that I'm looking back at this footage, Luigi's got some pretty sweet moves. All right, Luigi, dance. Yeah, I'm feeling you. Just envision yourself as a gif on Tumblr. You're doing it, man. You're gonna be internet famous. It's just too bad that while playing, in reality, you look more like this. And at number one, Tingle's freshly picked Rosy Ruby Land. Yes, out of all the characters in Zelda that could have had their own spin-off game, they chose Tingle. <laughs> but believe it or not, it's actually a pretty fun game. I've known of Tingle's Rosy Rupee Land for a good while now, but seeing as how it never released in the US, I didn't know too much about it. I used to think it was just a puzzle game or something like that. But it turns out that it's a lot like a normal Zelda game. Well, a normal Zelda game where you play as Tingle, Navi is a purple clothed fairy with big boobies, and you fight bosses that look like this. But other than that, it's basically the same thing. The whole point of the game is to get rupees. Basically, everyone in the game is obsessed with them. Especially the first character you meet, Uncle Rupee, who's just a giant skin-colored rupee with a face and a body. He convinces you that it's your destiny to go to Rupee Land! A place that's virtually paradise on Earth. But in order to do that, you've got to give him lots of money. Okay, sounds super legit. Totally not a scam at all. After you beat the first boss and give him 1,000 rupees, he goes from in the clouds in his underwear to in his own room and fully clothed. Hmm, suspicious. Even the fairy lady makes a point to tell you that. You look so cool when you throw rupees into the pool. Oh. Yeah. You just keep chasing your rupee land dream, Stingle. I'm sure it's all gonna work out great. This episode of Peanut Butter Gamer is brought to you by ThePixelEmpire.com. Hey everybody, thanks so much for watching. I'd like to take just one second to thank a new sponsor to the show, ThePixelEmpire.com. The Pixel Empire is a website that creates gaming and pop culture inspired posters and prints. They've got posters inspired by games like Zelda, Mario, Bioshock, Mass Effect, and tons of other stuff. And you can even get 15% off any order using the code PBGAMER. So yeah, if you are so inclined, you can find the link in the description below. And thanks for listening. Bye-bye. Hey everybody, again, thank you so much for watching. It really does mean a lot to me. If you want to see another video, I recently did a collab with my friend Space Hamster, aka Jeff. It was on Hotel Mario for the CDI. I highly recommend it. You can click it right here or in the description below. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Subscribe for more videos. Also, special thanks to my friend Pushing Up Roses and OM Garrett for allowing me to use some footage. I appreciate that. The links to those videos in the description as well. And special thanks to Smooth McGrew for letting me use one of his Zelda acapellas. Link to that in the description as well. You know, links, just links all around. Links all around. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye-bye.